on May 6th, our lives completely changed. And uh, before I get into the story, I wanted to share a scripture that's been in my spirit since that morning. And it's in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17. And it's just three little words, pray without ceasing. And I started praying at 4 a.m. on May 6th, and I haven't stopped praying since. The scripture has been preached to me, you know, my entire life. I've heard it preached, but it took on a new meeting on that morning when um, we were woken up at 4 a.m. Uh, with a phone call from the Fairfield police saying that our 16-year-old daughter had been in a car crash and was taken to um, UC Westchester. We were given no other information but that. And when Kenny woke me up and told me, that's when I started praying, right then and there. I, that's all I knew how to do. I mean, I was so scared and so um, everything was so uncertain. I just did what I, what I knew to do, pray. And so we, we got in the car and all the way down to the hospital, I, I, my prayers then turned into pleading. I was begging God, please don't let my daughter die. Please don't take my baby. And so um, upon arriving at UC Westchester, um, we got out of the car, I could hear the medical helicopter in the back. And again, I went back to, Lord, please, please don't, don't take my baby. Please don't take our daughter. Um, so we ran in and the nurses there at the station uh, told us that one of the, she was with another girl in the, in the car accident and one of them was gonna be taken by a helicopter and the other one was gonna be taken by ambulance. And so they rushed us into this consult room and um, still telling us nothing. And so I just sat in the corner and I just sobbed and I just prayed, God, please, you know, uh, please just don't take her. That, that's all, all I could say. That I, and just whisper the name of Jesus. It just, you know, that's all that would come to my mind is just Jesus and God don't take her. Th those are the only things I could pray. And so Kenny started making some phone calls and um, that started a wave of prayer that I think reached beyond anything I know. I mean, our family was praying, our friends were praying, and I found out later on there were people that didn't even know us that were praying. And I feel like the throne of God was reached by, by that prayer chain. I really do. Um, you can probably see the car, um, the picture of the car that I sent in. Um, it did not look good for those girls. We had um, some people tell us that were first responders on the scene that they had told friends of ours that they didn't know were friends of ours that those girls are probably not gonna make it. Um, the car was demolished, as you can see. So um, when the doctor finally did come into the consult room, he, had, he told us that Savannah's, both of her lungs were collapsed and um, that they were gonna take her to UC Medical Center in Cincinnati, and we asked is there any way we could see her? And they told us, yeah, you can see her. Uh, we're gonna wheel her into the ambulance. You can just stand in the hallway and see her there, but we're gonna warn you that it's hard for parents to see their child the way you're gonna see your child. It's kind of scary. And um, <laughs> scary isn't even the word to describe what I felt when I saw her wheeled out there with tubes hanging off of her. I mean, everywhere there was, stuff coming out of her mouth and things coming out of her chest and um, she had a neck brace on and um, I asked if she could hear us talking to her and they said yes she could hear you so I just I whispered a prayer over her and I just told her you know you're not alone hang in there you're you're gonna you're gonna be all right Jesus is right here with you and so so is mom and dad and um, they they put her in the ambulance and they told her told us we could follow them down there and um, so we did, and uh, when, we, when we got down there, they told us that only one person could come in because of COVID-19, and so um, I, I, Kenny had to, I mean, that's my baby. I, I'm so, I mean, I know that's her dad, but that's my baby, and I'm like, I, I have to stay. You know, I, I didn't know if I could handle what they were gonna tell me, but I couldn't leave my baby, so. They did um, tell him that he had to leave and I could stay. But and it, I, the first thing I thought was it's so devastating to be here without Kenny. But I wasn't there alone. The Holy Spirit was with me the whole time. And when I was waiting in that room, waiting to um, find out more information, 
the Holy Spirit, I could feel his presence and he gave me an unexplainable comfort and peace that I just, I can't even, I can't even explain it with words. It was just an undeniable presence of the Holy Spirit that, that gave me peace. The thing I want everybody to know is that somebody touched the throne for our daughter. I mean, she was on a ventilator. It was breathing for her. And the prayers that were going up for her, I don't even, I don't even understand how far they reached. People are coming up to me now and saying, you know, I've been praying for your daughter and I, I don't even know these people. And God listens, listened to their prayers, listened to our prayers, because in two days, she was off the ventilator. Um, by day four, she was sitting up. Um, I got some pictures. Um, she was sitting up, eating. By day five, they had her out of the bed, walking down the hallway. And by day six, she was home. Um, that's a miracle. That, that is a miracle. God did a miracle for her. And um, I, the verse before, verse 17 in or First Thessalonians says, rejoice always. And through this situation, I can tell you that God took our panic and turned it into praise. He turned our sorrow into singing. He turned our tears into triumph and our fear into faith. And for that, I will rejoice always. And like I said earlier, um, Savannah wasn't alone in the crash. She was with her, one of her best friends, Kayla, and Kenny's gonna tell you a little bit about. Kayla has severe head trauma and she's still in a coma, but partially is induced, the other part just on her own. Um, they moved her last Friday from UC to Children's Medical Center now, and they're going to start doing therapy on her, keep her muscles and everything going. And um, we, yesterday's report, they was able to get her out of the bed. Though she's still in a coma, they got her out of the bed and they put her in a wheelchair. They had her setting up for about 45 minutes. That way her body would get more acclimated with the with the condition and um, they turned the uh, oxygen off and she was able to breathe on her own for the first 30 minutes all by herself. Now they did turn it back on to help her breathe easier, but in this next coming week, they're hoping to be able to start getting her out of the bed with the machines that they have and do physical therapy for up to three hours a day. And with that, they're gonna be turning the medication down and allowing her to breathe more on her own and they're hoping that she will wake up so Tim and Shelly, that's Kayla's mom, they, you know, continue to pray for them, pray for um, Kayla that, you know, she gets full treatment. She gets, you know, she, God will bless her and heal her. And when she wakes up, that she will have full mind and spirit. Yes. And we just pray that you will be with her at all times. Continue to pray with the family and just be with them. And we, we thank you guys for all of you have done. Yes. We thank you for your love, for your prayers and for for your friendship thank you for everything yeah. uh, thank you kenny and candy we we lift you guys up thank you we thank really you. do thank you good things are ahead yes good things are ahead. yes they are so uh, um one thing i i think that uh, i've heard doesn't matter how good of a person you are mm. stuff happens it does, right. does. Yeah. it does That's right but yes, it does. but god took something that satan tried to destroy and turned it into a walking miracle yes Amen. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Lisa, do you have something to say there? No, I'm just uh, wishing the best. I've been praying for you guys. Yes, thank and you. Thank you. We God feel everyone right in the middle of all of this. Yes. And yes. Um, it'll be all for his glory. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Amen. Amen. As Candy, uh, Candy and, and Kenny sat here and they told you their story, a story that no parent, no family member ever wants to hear, no friend ever wants to hear. It reminds me that in some time in life, you will have to choose your response. There will be a time in your life that you will have to ask yourself the question, how will I get through? There will be a time in your life that you will say, 
what shall I choose? Because there's going to be a time in your life when life is difficult. This week I've spoken to several people who have experienced layoff, furlough, termination, no fault of their own, simply because of the economy, a time that is difficult. You will experience a time like Kenny and Candy in Savannah when life really doesn't make sense. It certainly doesn't seem fair. It, it will be that day that, that comes unawares. And also in life, we, we see uh, others. In our despair, we look at someone else in their delight, and it seems that they have it easier. They've got it better. They're not going through what you're going through. John 21 and 21 is about a story. Peter was told by Christ uh, some, some, some things that would happen in his future. And it was about pain and it was about suffering. And Peter turned the question to some of his fellow followers and said, what about them? What are they going to have to experience? Jesus returns back to Peter and says, really, it's what is it to you? You're going to have to deal with your burden. You're going to have to deal with your cross and they're going to have to deal with their cross. And may I tell you that I hope that your time of grief, your time of pain is not now. But there are three little things that I think that might will help you that I had heard many weeks ago from a gentleman by the name of Jensen Franklin. And he said this on a TV interview. And I would just like to uh, give some of that back to you. One is God is with you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? There's nothing that you can do that causes God not to be with you. He's there through the valley, through the shadow, through the death. David in the Old Testament says, where can I go that you're not there? And there's not a place. The answer is not. God is with you. Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, the 6th verse says, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or terrified. He says, but your Lord goes with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Jesus told this important uh, truth that he would not leave you. And he would not leave them. And he says, I tell you what is going to be even more important. I am going to allow my spirit to be with you. You see, because Jesus was one person at one place, but his Holy Spirit is everywhere with you and with me. And so he says, it's good that I go. And so Jesus went away. He went to, to the right hand of the Father and he sent his Holy Spirit. And we today celebrate Pentecost Sunday, that spirit that is with each and every one of us. Very much God and very much with us. And it's an individual uh, a spirit that goes with you. It's one spirit that's in individual with, with each one of us as individuals and that living within us as his, as his promise. He gives us a guide. He gives us comfort. He gives us help. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians 1 and 4 said, the God who comforts us in all of our troubles, when that trouble comes to you, and it will at some point, there is a God that will comfort you. The second thing is that God is at the bottom of this. When Kenny and Candy were talking, you could ask yourself, where was God? And I would ask, answer that question. He was at the bottom of it. I uh, uh, have heard people that said, 
I think I've hit rock bottom. Where's God? He's at the bottom of it. You may be going through a, a divorce and you ask yourself, where's God? He's at the bottom of it. Your business could be in just a turmoil. It could be rock bottom. And you ask yourself, where's God? My answer to you would be, he's at the bottom of it. Deuteronomy 33, 27 says this, the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive your enemies before you. And so do you see this? And, and the scripture uh, indicates in the Old Testament, God underneath us, holding us up. He is underneath us. When you're at your bottom, there's a God with his everlasting arms holding you up. Isn't that a beautiful picture? At the very lowest place, God's strength and his power holding you and pushing you from the bottom. The bottom is the low of lows, but even there, God is with you. We often think that God is with us on the mountain. We often think that God is with us in the good times, and he is. But he's also with us at the most difficult of times. Do you remember Candy saying that in one, uh, in one scenario that she had the peace? That's what the scripture says, the peace of God that passes all understanding. So God is at the bottom of this when you cannot make sense of your situation. The third thing for a believer is that you have faith for this. You got it. You got this not in yourself, but you got it because Christ has given you strength. He has given you the ability. That faith is not even your own. It has been a gift granted to you. It's a wonderful thing. There was a story where Jesus was going up with some of his followers in the area of Galilee, a very mountainous area. Some mountains really tall, some mountains not so much. On one, it is not yet determined which mountain they really went up. Some says Hermon, which was 9,600, or it is 9,600 feet elevation. Some say it's uh, Tabor, which is 1800 in some change elevation. Nonetheless, Jesus and his followers went up on one of these mountains and there we know that as the transfiguration where with the followers of Christ, they saw Christ uh, transfigured before him. And as they did that, their lives were changed and they went down the, to the bottom of the hill or the mountain. If it was Hermon, it was a certain huge mountain. If it was Tabor, it was the, the lower mountain. Nonetheless, it was a huge place. And at the bottom of the mountain, Jesus tells them a wonderful story. And he says, hey guys, if you have faith as the size of a mustard seed, and he looks over to the mountain and he says, you don't have to have mountain faith. You can have just mustard seed faith. And so that mustard seed faith is what you need to get you through. You've got faith for this. You may be facing a, a layoff. You got faith for this. You may be facing a, uh, a collision an automobile accident. You got faith for this. You may be facing some uh, difficult uh, health issues. You got faith for this. And so today, I want you to know that God is with you. He is at the bottom. And you've got faith for this. I thank Kenny and Candy for sharing their story. And your story is real as well. I'm going to pray for you and ask God to bless you. But I want you to remember that he is there with you. Father, we just ask your blessings be upon each and every person that is here listening. 
And dear Father, would you touch them, be with them, encourage them. And dear Lord, we will certainly, certainly be so careful to give you the praise, so careful to give you the glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name. If this has been an encouragement to you today, hey, let us know. We thank you for your support, either by the way of the web or, or uh, uh, an app or ever how you choose to give. Thank you so very much. I'm excited about the possibility of coming back to church and the realization of seeing you. You guys have a great, great day. Amen.